Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Welcome back. We are going to go through a solution set or a problem manual that ASME has put together uh, for educational purposes. It's called ASME PTB-4 and this is the 2013 version and it's part three which is the materials part. In there they have three examples E3, 1, 2, and 3 and in this particular part here we're going to look the example we're going to look at a, a centrifuge um, circumferential weld joining a shell to a head. Let's begin. In this particular example, we have an ASME, you know, boiler pressure vessel code section eight division one, a post nineteen ninety nine piece of equip or equipment that we're working on and it's 516 grade 70 end plate and as you recall from previous videos uh, this is uh, 70n is a, a very tough type of steel and has um, good low temperature properties the component uh, is a cylindrical as we saw on the previous screen and we are looking at the, uh, the circumferential weld. So at that point, we have 1.125 inches with a corrosion allowance of a, an eighth of an inch. The, the weld category, according to UW3, is a category A. It's a, it's a UW12. It's a type one butt weld with backing strip. And it's been subject to 100% RT and it's been subject to post weld heat treat and when i look at that thickness it's likely because of the code and the arbitrary mdmt set is is base is minus 29 uh fahrenheit or minus 20 20 sorry minus 20 fahrenheit and minus 29 centigrade as mentioned earlier we will look at the exempt exemptions found in UG 20 part F. That's the first step. Um, there's a table in section eight that sort of talks about where it, it goes through all of the step, steps and the figures. There's also a very handy table, uh, like, a, a, like a block diagram showing all of this, the procedures and it's found in that, um, that problem manual that we're going through today. So let's look at the exemptions for, for UG20F, which is the first stage. You can see over here that um, the material is a P1 or two, check. The thickness does not exceed half of an inch. Okay, we don't have a, a curve A, so we go to here, which is part of step one, where, where a category D, but we're much thicker than an inch so we don't we don't pass so right away we can continue but there's no point we, we have to continue down and look at the the curves so there's hydrostatically tested yeah it's been done that the design temperature is between there no we're, we're going for something colder the thermal or mechanical shock loadings are not, you know, a controlling factor in design. That's true. And five of the cyclical loading issues are, is not a, an issue. So let's continue. So we go down, we keep going forward by proceeding. Now we go through step one material classification from figure UCS 66 and note four, the impact exemption curves for, for SA 516 grade 70 end plate, which is a normalized plate. 
Um, that's the most typical symbol that I've seen for normalized. I, I've seen other ones before for symbols for normalized plate. And um, basically, I mean, it has to be, you know, um, a certain grain, fine grain practice. And uh, it has to be follow curve D material. So let's go and look at UCS 50, 50, uh, 66, the, the curve that we talked about earlier in the videos. And we're sitting here at um, curve D, and you can see note four. We are right in this area. So let's let's continue with. This. So we're going to look at the governing thickness because the the horizontal part of the of the graph is the horizontal thickness issue. So refer to UCS 66A one one notes one through A five. It's a cylindrical abut weld to a a dish non-welded part. So we follow this as we continue down. And in earlier videos, we talked about this. So the governing thickness is number one. So we will continue down that path. And of course, this is the figure shown here. Governing thickness, step two. The governing thickness is equal to the nominal thickness of the th thickest welded joint. So again, we are here. So therefore, the thickness is determined to be um, the, the 46 millimeters, right? And so we'll continue to look at the curve, go back to the curve again. And from the vessel information, um, we require, this is the arbit, what they call the arbitrary, we need to hit minus 29 or minus 20 Fahrenheit. So let's go and take a look at what's going on. Okay, so let's go to the final step. This is the, where we're going to look at the exemption curve. As you recall, a couple steps earlier, we, we went to, to UCS 66. We determined from note four that our material was a group D. We determine our governing thickness was 46 millimeters. We go up across and then we determined our minimum design metal temperature, uh, which is equal to minus 21.7. I use the, the, the charts because it's more, um, you, you know, more accurate and it's, um, it's better for, for spreadsheet use, but the tables are good in their way because it's good for presentation with the client so they can it's very easy to do a presentation with with graphs and so we found um that we we didn't meet what we were looking for and so what do we got to do well we got to do impact testing because we didn't pass um because the available was was higher than you know the the, the mdmt required so it we have to do impact testing, but there's some more steps that can be applied and you can go to use CS 66 B. And this is where um, the ASME example one ends. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.